gorgeous coconut milk pumpkin soup with soaked chanterelle mushrooms and poached lobster. Oh, get me a spoon. Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. From pumpkin pies to pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin is the American icon and nothing symbolizes fall in America more than the arrival of the pumpkin. Every October, adults are obsessed with pumpkins. They decorate their front porches with them, all the different shapes and colors. And the kids love the pumpkins too, carving the jack-o'-lanterns and putting the candle in the center. And every year, over one and a half billion pounds of pumpkins are produced every year. The pumpkin was one of the first wild plants cultivated for human consumption in America. So that makes it part of American culinary history. I want to share with you my favorite pumpkin soup. Now, I don't use canned pumpkin in this recipe. It's all fresh. So it takes a little extra time, a little extra work but it's worth it, I promise, so don't let that put you off. I use pie pumpkins when I'm making my pumpkin soup, but I've also got a fairy tale pumpkin roasting away in the oven because I want to serve it inside that. Look at that, it looks amazing already. When we're cutting the pumpkin, turn it sideways and cut down. Take off that stalk, but don't cut all the way through it. Keep turning it around and cutting. Turn it around and cut and then the stalk just comes off. Now we've got a base to actually cut the pumpkin firm. Next, put a knife into the pumpkin, okay? We're not just trying to saw away at it, we'll end up losing our fingers and we don't wanna do that. So, knife into it and then just work our way down to the bottom. What I always tell chefs when I'm teaching them, when they're cutting something like the winter squash, the pumpkins, then it's always best to keep cutting down onto the board, right? So then turn it around, go the other way. Where we cut, follow it around. And it's as easy as that. When you're working with a pumpkin on the board, the last thing you need is for the board to be rocking around. So what I use is one of these new gadgets. I've shown it before in my other videos. It's called a board buddy and you slot that piece of silicon down and put the board on top. Now, the board's going nowhere. I put a link to them in the description. They're not expensive. If you don't want to order one, then a little paper towel, wet it first, put it underneath the board. It'll stop it slipping. But I do like the board buddies. Next, we've got to take from the center the seeds, the pumpkin seeds. So we just get a spoon and scoop away at those. You can eat the seeds, if you wash them off, dry them really well, toss them in a little olive oil with some chili and garlic and salt, roast them off for about 15 minutes on a tray, absolutely gorgeous. But today, I'm not going to use them in my soup. Once you've got all the pulp and the seeds out, then we've got to take the skin off the pumpkin. And to do that, again, cut down all the time. So cut it in half and then into little wedges like this. Once we've got these wedges, then I'm going to sit it firm on the board and just cut down all the way around. By doing it this way, I'm not gonna lose any fingers. And you can do this part the day before if you want to, before you're making your soup. You can do it ahead of time. Just sit the pumpkin in the fridge. And then once I've cut all of the outside rind off, then I'm going to just cut them into bite-sized pieces. Once you've got them all cut, they're going into a 400 degree oven for about 20, 25 minutes. But first, we're going to give them a little drizzle of olive oil and a sprinkle of salt. Maybe a little pepper too. Salt really draws out the moisture from the pumpkin and helps it roast much quicker. You can boil these too if you want to, but by roasting them, we get a caramelization in there 
on the outside of the pumpkin and that really brings out the natural sweetness and for me that just takes the pumpkin soup to the next level into the oven while the pumpkin's roasting i'm going to start preparing the rest of my ingredients that are going into the soup i've got some onion some turmeric and some ginger now by adding the turmeric and ginger i'm creating this gorgeous soup but also a healthy one too that has all of these immune boosting benefits to it. And that's just perfect for cold and flu season. So, onion first. We don't have to chop it too fine because it's going into the blender, but just run a knife through that and then just chop, rough chop. I'm using a whole onion. Then my turmeric, I just take the knife and scrape it. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous orange color. And then some ginger. Just scrape it and I can cut off what I need, probably about this much, and my turmeric too. Then I'm going to saute the onion, turmeric, ginger and a little garlic in some olive oil until it gets nice and soft and translucent. A little salt in there too, again, helps draw the moisture out, makes it soften quicker. Pumpkins are so versatile. You can mash them, puree them, roast them. I mean, so many different ways of using them. All we seem to do though here is just carve holes in them and put a lantern in them. <laughs> As you can see now, the onions have started caramelizing and they've released all those sugars in there. They already smell amazing. And that garlic in there too. Keep stirring it, don't just leave it because you don't want to burn the garlic, that makes it really bitter. Then I'm going to add a little flour in there. Let's give it a stir and then I've got some chicken broth. If you want to use vegetable broth, you can. Stir that in. And we already have the base for our soup. And then just add the rest. Bring it to the boil and let it simmer then for about 10 minutes, just so all those flavors go into the broth. When the pumpkin comes out of the oven, it smells amazing. It's nice and soft and tender and caramelized on the top. Don't worry about those darker parts. Those are just gonna enhance the whole of the soup. I also roasted the fairy tale pumpkin here, and I just think it looks amazing to serve the soup in the fairy tale pumpkin. I cut off the lid, scooped it out, roasted it for about 45 minutes, and then you actually have the top and the bottom. Now, the color of the fairy tale pumpkin is, is really this gorgeous orange, and when you mix it with the pie pumpkin, you get this magical color. <laughs> fairy tale pumpkin, magical color. <laughs> Sorry, dad joke. So I'm starting off with my pumpkin that I roasted, my fairy tale pumpkin, and I'm going to take all of the meat from that one and put it into my blender. Now the reason that I don't mix all of this into the liquid is because I want to make sure I've got the right thickness. And by pureeing first and then adding the liquid, then I can get to the right consistency. Then I can add my pie pumpkin. Save a little bit. After that, we're going to add the liquid. And we're going to blitz it until smooth. Once it's nice and smooth, then we can take our Oh, it smells amazing, this gorgeous pumpkin soup, and pour this into the bowl. It'll still be quite thick, but that's okay, because I'm going to add some coconut milk into there. 
Now this is optional. If you don't want to put that in, you can put a little bit more chicken broth, or if you also want, you can put some cream in there too and make it really creamy. But this is a great dairy-free soup for the fall. If we want to now, we can just add in there a little more chicken broth for consistency. And it really does smell amazing. Now the taste test, just make sure that there's plenty of salt and pepper in there. Mmm, it's so creamy. You can actually taste that turmeric. I didn't put a lot in there, but you know, the benefits, you know, to the immune system. And it's ready to serve. Now, I like to serve my pumpkin soup with some chanterelle mushrooms, just lightly soaked wild mushrooms, a little olive oil in there, a little garlic, and then some chives, and then I've actually got some lobster too. The combination of all that together, just incredible. Now, you don't have to put wild mushrooms and lobster in yours at home. If you like it a little sweeter, a splash of maple syrup, stir that in as well, a little cream. I'm gonna put some coconut cream in mine just to finish it. <sighs> There's no wonder I love the fall and all these beautiful earthy dishes. All we have to do now is serve it. Oh, this just looks delicious. Looks amazing. Touch the edge of the side there. Look at the caramelization of the sugars from the fairy tale pumpkin around the side there. Then I've got my wild mushrooms, my beautiful chanterelles I can sit on top. A little of my coconut cream that's going in there as well. And my lobster. Oh, and finally, the chives. In the 1800s, pumpkin pie became really popular, a way of using up pumpkins, and everyone was baking them. In fact, today, over 50 million pies are baked every Thanksgiving. Unbelievable. But pumpkin soup, is the poor little sister, the little Cinderella pumpkin, Cinderella. <laughs> I hope that you make this recipe at home. I hope that you'll try this. Pumpkin soup is just gorgeous. And you know, if you can run to a few wild mushrooms in there, or even regular mushrooms, the combination of those earthy wild mushrooms and the soup, a little lobster and the coconut is amazing. Mm. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you've made a pumpkin soup or a squash soup. Let me know your recipe too. I'll see you again soon.